What should I do if my partner is bad with money? Having a partner who's bad with money can be stressful and frustrating. Conflicts over money lead to a lot of fights, they can lead to debt, and they can keep you from living the life that you want. Now, fortunately, there are ways to get your partner on the same page with money. The first and most important thing is to get off your high horse. If you're the one who's good with money, you might think your partner should just go along with whatever you say, but that's not how relationships work. You're setting up a kind of parent-child dynamic where you're the one who's nagging and pushing and they're just digging in their heels. What works a lot better is empathy and compromise. You could start by asking some open-ended questions like, what was your first memory about money? Or how did your parents handle money in their relationship? Or even how did you handle finances in your last relationship? The answers to those questions can give you some insight into how your partner thinks about money. You may also want to talk about why getting a handle on your money is so important to you. When my husband and I got together, he saw the word budget and thought deprivation. He didn't want anything to do with that. But for me, a budget was about not wasting money on stuff I didn't care about so I could spend more money on the stuff that I did. Once we got to that understanding, it was a lot easier to talk about money. And once the money conversation gets going, it's really important to start setting goals together as a couple. And here's where compromise is going to come in really handy. Let's say that you want to retire early and your partner loves to travel. Retiring early requires a lot of savings. So you may have to set your goal back a year or two. In other words, retire a year or two later, and your partner may have to settle for a big trip every other year instead of every year. That's a way to get what you want, but also meet in the middle. Another thing that can really help is having some no questions asked money. We call that our slush funds. That way I can get a massage, he can buy art supplies, and nobody is second guessing the other person about how much they spend. How you set this up depends on how you handle the rest of your finances. Some couples like to keep all their accounts together, others like to keep everything separate, but most couples are somewhere in the middle. So what we like to do is put our paychecks into our joint account and then I have an automatic transfer set up so money goes into our individual accounts. If you've got a setup where you have individual accounts and you're putting money in a joint account just to cover the bills, then the money in your individual accounts will be the no questions asked money. Either way, you're getting some freedom and some privacy. You can buy each other gifts. You can do what you want. It can really cut down on the fighting. Speaking of fighting, sometimes it can be really hard to work through this stuff on your own. You may need a third party to help. Fortunately, there's a relatively new group called the Financial Therapy Association, and they specialize in helping people work through their issues around money. You've heard of financial advisors, you've heard of psychotherapists. Well, these folks take both approaches to help get people talking about money. It's rare for both members of a couple to be on the same page when it comes to money. So remember to be patient, to have honest conversations, and to be willing to ask for help if you need it. You may not love the way that your partner handles money, but you do love your partner, so it's worth it to look for solutions together. I'm Liz Weston, and this is Awkward Money Questions, where we offer smart and comforting answers to your most uncomfortable money questions. If you have a money question, please leave it in the comments below and subscribe.